A motoring commentator says thousands of people are falling victim every day to an inadequate vehicle registration system. The system does not require both the buyer and the seller to provide ID when a vehicle changes hands, leaving it open to abuse. Adam Hollingworth reports. Aspen Fernandez's TNT Roma was her pride and joy until a month ago. One day it was there and the next day it was gone. Just last month it was unfortunately stolen and... Um, yeah, I, I heard that it was from the police that it was re-registered under a new name. So, good news, right? That surely makes it easy to recover. Well, not exactly. A month later, the police tell us it's under investigation, despite the new person's name on the motor vehicle register. Honestly, just confused as to how, how I wasn't told if, if that sort of thing can happen, can happen to anyone. She's right, and it cuts both ways. Stephen Gilliland bought his son a scooter on Trade Me for $2,000, only to get a knock on the door a few days later from a large debt collector. Lovely gentleman, but very firm and friendly. Um, he was there to collect the scooter because it had uh, $1,600 owing on it, so <laughs> very frustrating. This story has a happy ending for Gilliland, but only after he was forced to turn detective. Ended up going back through four people in total to find the, find the young kid who still owed a bit of money on it. Ended up getting the money back for myself from him. Under the old system, both buyer and seller had to confirm the purchase at a post office, and crucially, both had to provide ID. But then the system was streamlined. Waka Kotahi says being the registered person in charge of a vehicle does not provide legal title or ownership. It exists mainly so that authorities send notices for fees, fines and tickets to the person who's in charge of a vehicle. We're talking thousands every day. Thousands every day. We're talking thousands every day, you just don't hear about them. The Dog and Lemon Guide author Clive Matthew Wilson says he spends a lot of his time helping people recover their vehicles. It's a thrown together system that was designed to eliminate bureaucracy but in fact it ends up with a lot of people getting ripped off. Matthew Wilson says both parties should supply ID, then a cheque should be made whether there's money owing on the vehicle and only then should ownership change. Adam Hollingworth, News Hub.